Welcome to everything you need to know, and today we are chatting eggs. While this might not be everything there is to know, it is everything you need to know for today. So we know eggs are highly nutritious, right? And they're highly versatile. Let's chat first about the nutritional properties or the benefits to eating eggs. So I've got a top 10 for you today. Why eat eggs? These are the top 10 nutritional components of eggs. They are good for helping our good cholesterol. So until recently, it was believed that eggs increase our cholesterol levels. I don't know if you've ever been to the doctor and the doctor has said, you've got high cholesterol, you need to decrease all the foods that contain cholesterol. Well, that is not according to what you have to do to eggs now. Eggs do have some cholesterol, but it acts in our bodies in a different way. So we do know that there's different types of cholesterol in different kinds of foods. And yes, eggs do contain a little bit of bad cholesterol, that LDL that we want to have low in our meal plan. But regular consumption of eggs has been found to have little effect on the amount of bad cholesterol or the amount of LDL in our bodies. On the other side, eating eggs regularly does help to increase our good cholesterol, our HDL, our happy cholesterol, they call it which in turn helps to lower the risk of developing any kind of heart disease or they term it cardiovascular disease. So eggs are heart healthy. And even if you are on cholesterol medications, you can still eat up to seven of every single week. So go for it. Did you know, and this is number two, eggs are a source of iron and a heme iron source in that because they're from an animal. So we know that iron is a dietary nutrient that is important to our body because it carries oxygen with our red blood cells all around our body. If we didn't have oxygen, you'd be fainted all the time. And so we need that oxygen to carry, or that iron to carry that oxygen attached to their RBCs. But iron also helps to keep our immune system strong and helps us to regularly metabolize or break down the food that we eat. So when we don't have enough iron in our diet, I'm not sure if you've ever been there, anemic or just low iron diagnosed, we often feel tired, we're quite miserable, we um, are very irritable, and we get these frequent headaches. Those are often the signs of low iron. The yolk part of the egg, it contains a lot of that heme iron, which is the easiest type of iron for our body to absorb. Number three, eggs help to promote brain health. And it's the choline, I don't know if you've heard that before, but choline, which isn't often listed on that nutritional facts table, so we're not often concerned about it because we can't read about it, but choline is needed for our nerve system and our muscular system to be healthy and strong. And experts recommend that we eat quite a bit of it every single day, and eggs are a good source. So eating one egg, us women, we get one-fifth of our choline need for the day. So that's pretty awesome. And I know that you've heard that carrots have been hailed as the perfect food for protecting your eyesight. However, doctors now know that eating eggs can also help to prevent the degeneration of our eyesight. In the yolk part, there is an antioxidant called lutein that fights that macular degeneration, which is a common cause of blindness as we age. And if you remember what an antioxidant is, an antioxidant is that part of foods that we eat that runs around our body and collects those free radicals. And free radicals are things that attack a cell and start to break it down so it's not doing what it's made to do. So those antioxidants come along, kind of vacuum up those free radicals, get rid of them so the cells can keep functioning well. So the yolks contain the lutein, but they also contain another antioxidant called zeanthin, which protects the eyes from the harmful UV rays from the sun. So both this lutein and the zeanthin can reduce the risk of developing cataracts. So that's pretty exciting. 
Number five, talking about strong bones, egg yolks contain naturally occurring vitamin D, and that is not something that you can find in many foods. The vitamin D is required to help in our gut absorb calcium, which we know calcium is needed for strong bones and strong teeth and strong muscles. If a person becomes deficient or low in vitamin D, then they often have their weak bones um, and they're at an increased risk for falling. Number six, eggs also help to keep our hair and our nails healthy because one egg contains the protein of about six grams. Whew. Eggs also contain a wide variety of nutrients that helps to work with that protein to help to keep that skin and the hair and the nails healthy. And those include zinc and vitamin B12 as well as vitamin A. So we know, number seven, we know that eggs are part yellow and part white, and that is part fat and vitamins and part protein and vitamins. So this mix of protein and fat helps to keep us full longer, which is really great because studies show that those people that eat eggs instead of grain for breakfast, like toasts or oatmeal or cereals, actually feel full longer and have higher energy levels throughout the day. So this increased satiety or full feeling leads to consuming less calories over the day because you're feeling full and you're content and you're not thinking about food over the course of the day. So eating eggs might be helpful to maintain a healthy weight. All right, two left. We now know that um, eggs help to decrease the risk of breast cancer. By eating eggs regularly as part of an anti-cancer meal plan, which is lots of fruits and vegetables, lots of bright, colorful foods, women can minimize the chance of getting breast cancer. And the reason for this is what we talked about before, it's that choline. Choline appears to have protective effects around women and the risk of getting breast cancer. So other studies show that they had two groups of ladies and in one group, those ladies ate about two or less eggs a week and the other group, they ate three or more. And they found that those that consumed more eggs a week, they had a lower risk of breast cancer. So you might want to eat at least three eggs a week. Number nine, good for cardiovascular health. So remember we learned that eating eggs increases our good cholesterol, our, our HDL. Well, it also contains, these eggs, selenium. And selenium is a mineral that is anti-inflammatory. So it helps to keep our cells working well and not angry. We call, we call inflammation in our gut and our body when the cells are angry and they're bigger and they're not working well. So selenium is an anti-inflammatory nutrient that helps, that has been linked to decreasing the cardiovascular disease and even heart attacks. So that's a wonderful um, addition as well. And lastly, the tenth reason why eating eggs are really great for us is because they provide that long-lasting energy. So we learned that they have that protein and the fat combination, but not only that, they contain B vitamins and a wide variety of B vitamins. And we know that B vitamins are the vitamins that's necessary in every single cell to make that energy. So without the B vitamins, your cells don't have energy and we're feeling more tired and fatigued. They also play a, a, a very important role in making neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters are those things in the brains and our nervous system that carry messages from one cell to the next. And also, those neurotransmitters help to keep us happy. They regulate our mood. So they're very important. So eggs are high in B vitamins. So they're a good food for keeping our mood stable, keeping us happy, keeping our energy levels stable. But it's very important to not just eat one part of the egg. Some people, they tell me, well, I, I take the yellow part out. I don't really like that flavor. But here is something very necessary to know. Some B vitamins, such as B2, thiamine, and B3, are found in the white part of the egg. But other ones, such as B5 and B12, are only found in the yolk. So you have to eat both parts to, contain, to get all of those B vitamins. 
So there you have the top 10 reasons for why eggs are nutritious. So let's chat about some eggs fact, some egg facts. Did you know that hens were first domesticated? So that means that they were captured and kept for personal use by the Chinese people, which means the Chinese people were the first to use them um, in baking and eating because they were able to gather those eggs. I don't know if you've ever tried on a farm to get eggs from a hen. Sometimes those hens do not like to give them up. So they had to domesticate them first so that they could find eggs on a regular basis. And what would our foods be like if we didn't have eggs? They wouldn't um, be creamy, they wouldn't be fluffy, things wouldn't bind together really well. So eggs have made a really big difference in how we cook today. Did you know you can eat other eggs than just hen eggs? You can eat ostrich eggs. The big ones. You can eat geese eggs and duck eggs and turkey eggs. And then of course the hen, um, which is the female chicken. And lastly, guinea fowl eggs. And those are even smaller than chicken eggs. Did you know that each ostrich egg has 176 grams of protein versus the hen egg, which has six grams of protein. So that's an egg to share with a crowd. So how do we eat these eggs? The number one way we eat these eggs is scrambled. The polls say, of course, scrambling is the most popular for breakfast, for lunch, and breakfast for supper, right? But other ways we eat them, we can fry them in just a pan, we can hard boil them, we can poach them, and we can put them in recipes for cooking and baking. Here's a fun fact, something that I had not known, how to properly poach an egg. So a poached egg is when you boil water and then you drop an egg outside of its shell right into the, into the water. Usually when I do that though, the egg breaks apart and the most annoying part is the pot to clean after because the egg is all sticking to the sides of the pot. So I discovered in my research that poaching an egg, you bring your water to a boil, you turn it right down to a simmer, just like you do in hard boiling eggs. So there's little tiny bubbles all around the outside. And then you take a slotted spoon, so one with holes, and you kind of make a little hurricane in the middle of your water. And then you have a bowl already cracked, have an egg in the bowl already cracked. And while you're making this little hurricane, you, or a whirlpool, you drop your egg into that and then it stays intact and then you cook that until either hard or li lots of people like a soft yolk. So there you go. So now you know how to cook a proper um, poached egg. So I often get a question, do I refrigerate my eggs? Do I not? Well, in North America, it's quite uncommon to see unrefrigerated eggs, but over in Europe, that's how they have them all the time. And the reason is because when they're fresh, if you don't wash them, you can rub off any dirt on them, but if you don't wash them, then there's a protective coating called a cuticle on the outside of the egg. Um, and if you don't wash that off, then it is good on your counter for five, six weeks, no problem. But here in North America, all our eggs undergo a washing process, so then we have to keep them in the fridge. But if you do purchase them from a farm stand, you might want to ask to see if they've been washed because if not, you don't have to keep space in your fridge used up by eggs. So here's a question. How do you tell if your egg is fresh? Everybody wants to know. There is an expiry date on the side of the container. Yes, right there. But how do you know if it's, you know, that expiry date's been for, you know, four or five weeks since it was just late or if it was just one or two. Well, here's the trick. You drop your egg, a fresh uncooked egg, into a glass of water. If it settles on its side on the, or on the bottom of the glass, the egg is fresh. It's heavier and it's totally fine to eat. If the egg floats, it's quite old and you probably don't want to eat that. If it's somewhere in the middle, then you're totally fine. Question I get quite often, is there a difference between brown eggs and white eggs? It's the same as, you know, where does brown milk come from? Well, not the cow. It all has to do with the chicken. So you've probably seen the brown eggs and you've seen the white eggs. It's even simpler than you think. It's just actually kind of funny. So chickens with white ear lobes, such as the silkies and the leghorns, those kinds are white they lay white eggs. Chickens with red feathers and red earlobes, like Rhode Island bred um, chickens or Plymouth Rock um, hens, 
they lay brown eggs. However, there is no nutritional difference between the brown egg and the white egg, besides, of course, the shell. Brown eggs tend to be a little bit more expensive, and this is because those birds are a little bit bigger, and so they eat a little bit more. But that is the only difference. So how long can you keep eggs around? So eggs, for being an animal product, actually have quite a long shelf life. So the USDA, which is the United States Department of Agriculture, they claim that the, the eggs can be refrigerated from three to five weeks after purchase. And I'm not sure, it's at least a week, because I have friends that are chicken farmers, it's at least a week to get from the farm to the grocery store. So eggs are good for six weeks. And that's pretty awesome. To optimize your storage time, keep the eggs in the original carton and store it in the coldest part of your fridge. So the door isn't an ideal spot because that has great temperature changes. And then eggs will last about a week in the fridge when they're hard boiled. So you can still eat them after that. So how to properly crack an egg. Lots of um, cooking shows, they go about and they crack on the side of their bowl and they open it up. Well, I'm going to tell you that that is not the way to crack it. The best way to crack an egg is you take it like this, the long ways, and you have your thumb down below. One crack on the countertop, it's a flat surface, is going to get you a nice big crack along the bottom of the egg. Now there's nothing really coming out, there's a little drip, but that's it. You don't want to crack it on the side because these pieces, when we cracked it on the table, a flat surface, are quite large. But on the side of a bowl, they can be really small and then there's a better chance you're going to get it, crack, or, um, the shells into your egg. So after you've cracked it, you get, get into that hole with your two thumbs, you pull it apart and you drop it in. And there we're um, shell free. And you always want to get, see how there's a little bit of that egg white still sticking in there? With clean fingers, you always want to get all of that out because that is going to be your egg white and you definitely want to eat as much as you can. Now I just want to, when you get fancy, you can do it one-handed, hopefully. And that one was not really well done <laughs> as uh, that shell was not very hard. But you can get very fancy when you do your cracking because um, you can do one in each hand and get really fast. But that is the ideal way to crack an egg so that you don't get your shells into your eggs. So how do you peel a hard boiled egg? So if the eggs are from the grocery store, just add them to a pot, cover the pot, the eggs with water um, and bring them to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, 10 minutes and then you're done and you definitely want to cool them really quickly. Um, if you get them from a farm stand and they're nice and fresh, they're gonna be very, very difficult to peel. So what I typically do is just, I crack it a little bit just so there's a tiny crack in it so that when it's boiling, the air can get in between the, um, the shell and then the egg on the inside. And that really helps you to peel them a lot better. So why are eggs sold by the dozen? Now we see 18s, but the most common is by the dozen. So according to the New York Times, this measurement system was developed after the Romans arrived in England in the first century. So every egg was sold for a penny, and so 12 eggs was a shilling. And so that was an easy way to sell eggs, for a penny or for a shilling. Some people still sell them um, individually, but the majority is 12, and then some people sell them in 18s or 24s, or even more than that that we see because we eat a lot of eggs. So something to remember is to keep it sanitary when you're around eggs. Y'all know where eggs came from, right? And that is okay. They're healthy for us to eat, but, and we know that, we, that they get washed. However, there might still be something, very low chance that there's salmonella or any sort of bacteria around the outside, but you're very much encouraged to wash your hands after cracking, a, cracking an egg before doing anything else so that you don't cross contaminate the possibility of having some salmonella on the shell on your hands and then on something else. So just give them a wash after you crack the egg. Oftentimes we have to anyways because we get some of that white on the egg or on the hand. So the other interesting thing is that they're all graded different. You can see here this says Canada grade A. The grading is actually just based on weights. And we can go from very large 
to peewee size and it's all just the weight of a 12 they don't weigh them individually just as the 12 together so the grades are double a single a or b and anything graded a is best for human consumption it's been nice and fresh and they look perfect so b is those perfectly imperfects right which um, you might find at a farmer's stand which is totally fine it just means that there's you know an extra bit of calcium on the shell or something lastly i want to share with you that hens are like humans Happy hens and people, happy people, live longer. So it's no surprise that happy hens produce more and better quality eggs. Hens are very reactive to their environment that they're in and they will not lay eggs under stressful conditions. Research from the University of Australia has shown that free range hens, which is just hens that are given the outdoors um, and grass to roam and eat on, produce more eggs than a bird confined to a cage um, in, a, in a farm. So there you have it, everything you need to know about eggs.